we're in this long downtrend. And in October of 2008, you got uh, really a, a, a lot of capitulation. I mean, you had like, it looks like seven, eight days in a row, super strong volume, tries to rally a little bit, not that well. And then it comes down again uh, into November, to the November low. Uh, and you you had not as many days in a row and you actually started getting a few blue spikes in there of, of, of people starting, starting to buy, which is kind of interesting. But then, then on your last move down, look at how the volume, uh, when you're going down to 67.10 in March of 2009. Yeah, you see how you did get, you get, you got a lot of bunch of red volume, but you don't, but compare that to the other two times it came down very hard. These, these were smaller and then the volume actually started changing and it looks like you got a really good uh, volume day uh I guess that's 490 million. Uh, it looks like a blue a blue volume yeah, right there. And somebody asked the question of what's an inside day. Well, if you see that, you see where it says 6710 right there. Yeah, perfect. You'll see that the high and low is, is higher and lower than the next day. The next day is an inside day. And sometimes you get turns, stocks, it's like a pause day. It's been coming down and all of a sudden it goes inside of the prior day. That's what an inside day is. And you can see it was on much, on much lower volume than, the, than the, that bottoming day. And then the volume picks up on the very next day and you gap up. And you're, that's, that's actually, that's a positive. Sometimes you see that on, on the downside too, but um, that's what an inside day should look like, a positive inside day, and then it, uh, it, it, it moves to the upside. So, so you got a low at 67.10 on the, on the spiders, but now go to the triple Qs and keep an eye on that same date, that March, early March date, and look what happened to the Qs. This is what you want to see and is that you have a higher low there you are at 2563 that did not make a new low versus the low in november see the low in november was 2505 so you're 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 getting a segment of the market that's starting to resist the decline and then you'll see it as we go into the individual stocks but you, i call that a non confirmation You've got one of the biggest index, the S&P 500, coming down, making a new low. You look at the triple Qs, which are 100 of the largest NASDAQ stocks. It comes down, does not make a new low. And so, again, a, a non-confirmation. They're not all going in the same direction. So now let's go to the individual stocks. And this is where you want to keep on looking at a lot of stocks every week. And the first one would be Apple. At that, we're looking at the same time, same time frame. And now look how this one, yeah, look at the March low. The March low is 82.33. That, that same March period that the S&P made a new low, where the triple Qs didn't make a new low. And see, it's, 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 it's a higher low. The lower, yeah, prior low right there, I guess it's 78.20. And, and so... It didn't. It 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 was starting to hold. It wasn't following through with the rest of the market or with the S and P 500, and that's what you want to see. And look and look how it it turned very very quickly. It didn't get giant volume, but you did get. That looks like about six days. Count the days: one, two, three, two down, four, five, six days up, two days down, and so. Uh, so then, and look what the stock did. The stock rallied from 82 and in six days went up one, two, three, up to 100, 82 to 100. That's what you want to see. It would be great if that got a lot of volume, but it did not give that thing up. I mean, it actually rallied all the way. It looks like to 110 before it came off. That's what you want to start seeing. And you don't want to see it just in one stock because maybe that was news. But if you look at the, the next stock on that, um, if you look at Amazon, look at the situation here. This actually hit a low in November. 
and then a higher low in February. And when we came down into that low in March, it wasn't even close to the low. Look, this stock was already in an uptrend. The 50 day had turned. The stock actually made a nice move from that uh, November low up into December, you know, built a base, made another move, looked like it gapped, that might've been earnings, and then came into its, into its uh, 50 day moving average. Where would your buy point be? Well, that would be very, I mean, I would say it would be very tough to buy this, you know, even during that whole period up until really it broke it back above that 200 day moving average, which would take you to, to the March low, because what you're doing is you're getting back up above the 200 day moving average. You're also getting above the prior base that it had built all the way back in the year before when the lows were uh, 6299 and 6120 back in March and July. So this is why you can wait. You don't have to you don't have to get the exact low. You don't even have to get the first base, but this stock made a, a terrific move or just kept on going. But um, so this and this was this was three months after that stock actually made a low. So this is one. This is another one that is holding, um, is 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 holding the of holding its rally, and not making new lows when the market is making new lows. And Dave, if you, if you could also highlight that S and P five hundred line on the chart, yes. So so they can see that. So you can actually compare what that stock is doing to that S and P five hundred. So that S and P five hundred is making a new low while this stock is really taking off. And the relative strength line has has had it was breaking out into new highs, harder to harder to see because uh, it's going in and out of that chart uh, price pattern. But so that's always good to 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 look at and compare and such. So then let's look at another one. The other one would be Google, and that would be a GOGL. Not as not as strong as um, as uh, as Amazon. But very similar to um, to Apple, but you can see that this was another stock that made a low in November of the prior year, and then in January a higher low, and then in March when the market actually made made its low, it it really had a third uh, a a third bottom of or it's a, a two higher bottoms, and uh, yeah, there you go, and. Um, and also, I, very, very important, look at the volume coming down in October and November. Huge volume. You got a few big volume spikes to the upside, but look at a lot of that red volume. Look how high that is. But then look what happened to it after it made its bottom. It hardly traded average daily volume on the downside for over, to over two months. You got a few days in there you know, when the market came down. But the whole thing really changed and was starting an uptrend. So it, what happened is, is the the sellers just get exhausted. I mean, you've you've wrung out everybody that it was possibly in that stock, and you got new buyers or people that just were holding on for the long term, and that thing started to move. So that's I I had one other example, and maybe this not as good, not as strong, but Qualcomm was another one. Not nearly as strong as these other three, but here's you're just you start seeing these patterns or you start seeing this happen. Same, you know, similar huge volume on the downside as you're going into those October and November lows, and then the volume just dries up. And you got a few bad days going into the low in March, but then that that started that started turning. So when you start not seeing one, but then you see two and you see three and maybe four, and they're in similar groups or similar areas of the market, that should really get your attention that you should be focusing on that. What I would then do is I would start going through other stocks within those groups to see if other ones were bothering, uh, bottoming, because those could be your stocks that could be the real leaders, or those could be the groups that could be the real leaders in the marketplace as the whole thing starts turning. So uh very very important and and why why am i still you know you know not too excited about the market is i'm not seeing that yet i'm i you know maybe we're seeing some of that happening in 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 the lilies and the vertexes and some of the the pharma uh related stocks that are resisting the decline 
but you want to start seeing more of those. And a, a few other things that um, that I can mention that I wrote down, what to look for at the end of a bear market, look for new names, new leadership, especially companies that are recent IPOs or those you've never heard of. Top 50 groups should contain many, you know, a number of uh, groups that are, are growth type of groups. Um, you should see new leadership starting to resist the last leg down, and we've talked about that in the in the weeks and the months before the bottom in the indexes. Um, and then, you know, large reversals to the upside on huge volume spikes in these averages in the individual stocks. Um, you know, strong price and volume. That's what you want to see. And it's, it's, it's not just one, one piece of the puzzle. It's, it's a bunch of these different things coming together that tell you, hey, we've got, a, we've got a bottom and we're starting to turn. And we've got maybe a little bit of that going on, but we, ha we haven't really seen a lot of evidence that we're really, that we're really starting to turn. So that's why you stay l with lots of cash, you stay attentive to the market, you, start, you keep on looking, you start doing research on maybe some of these stocks that are, are resisting the climb and building that watch list for when it when it does uh turn on uh, mute Dave. uh really great question thanks ken really great question from robin uh on, on this uh segment about how it feels to some people it looks like wedging all the way up but is the main difference one that uh one we've already had these massive sell-offs and two you're seeing the volume change yeah, you're seeing the volume dry up, but but see, I'm you know I'm not saying buy these things right off that first bottom. If you if you want to see a wedge, draw a line from thirty seven twenty is thirty seven seventy one in January or across the thirty seven twenty one. Draw that across. See, that's that's actually drifting down sideways. Get mm. you, uh, get that data off. Yeah, yeah. There there you go. Draw that. That's what you want to see. So it's now, it's now correct, and that's why you don't want to buy. You don't want to be trying to hit that absolute bottom because you might have gotten in as it started turning up in in December, and then just lost your patience as it was going through two and a half months of drifting January and February and into March. Uh, but but when you break that wedge to the upside, well, that could be your clue. And and if you look at look at Apple and see see how that how that progressed, and that was that was mostly, yeah. I mean, you could I would draw a line from like one twelve nineteen across to two o one o three, and you've got look at it, and then you can draw along along the bottoms, or even going up, I guess. And when that's broken. Uh, and then, then, yeah, the, then you get, you get multiple days to the upside and then, and the volume wasn't great, but then when you pulled back, there was very little volume on the downside. And so it, the whole, the whole tone of the stock has, has started to turn when you start seeing that type of evidence and you know, look, go, go to a Amazon also, um, I like I like your use of the word tone. <laughs> yeah, no, it changes. Everything changes. Yeah, and that's why I've always said you you draw whatever that exact bottom was on November fourteenth, fifteenth, sixteenth. To the left of that is entirely exactly a hundred on a hundred and eighty degree difference than everything to the right of that, because it changes. The volume changes. The price action changes. It, it, the volume price relation changes. And so, you know, in, in, instead of big volume on the downside, you have big volume on the upside. And you just start reading that and you see that it's, yeah, I mean, it's a, a totally different sound, a, a different tone than what you had on the way down. And decline, you have fast moves up. See, look, look how, how fast that stock moved from November uh, at its 34 low to 58 or even 54, and you gave up, you didn't give up much. Okay, you declined, you know, you went from 58 down to 47, but you did not go all the way back down to 34. You did not give it up. Uh, and then the next move up, you went to 67, and look how little you gave up on that one. You've pulled back to 59. 
And so the whole thing changes, the picture changes. Yeah, so that that's what you want to get to read. And that's what's so great about this this change date feature, go back to the best stocks, the best stocks and look at what they do during really bad markets and how they, at some point, they start resisting the decline. And you can study these things for yourself and, uh, and really get to get that picture in your mind of what it looks like uh, of the stocks that could be the future uh, true leaders. Really, really uh, thought-provoking and excellent uh, insights into how these these stocks changed their tone, changed uh, the the balance between supply and demand. Uh, Ken, your thoughts about what what David just presented? No, I was just going to say it really underscores the importance of uh, of relative strength because uh, you know in all of these examples, these stocks were starting to show relative strength, and um, that's why we look so much at the relative strength line. Uh, you know, near near new highs, and uh, you know, right now it, we're just not. I'm not really seeing uh, charts like like. Apple or, you know, Qualcomm or, or, or Google, but that's why we're, you know, going through screens, you know, we're, we're still seeing the market, you know, going after everything here. So stocks that were holding up last week, you know, the sellers are, are, are hitting them uh, uh, today. So, um, but again, you know, it's just, just relative strength is, uh, is so important because the stocks uh, showing relative strength as uh, the market is, uh, is, is bottoming often uh, go on to become the biggest, uh, the biggest winners. Uh, great comment there, Ken. And David, back to you. Uh, a really good question from James about, when you see the the stock forming this cup, for instance, and you've seen it seen to dry up in the volume, you've seen it make higher highs uh, since the what turned out to be the ultimate low here. Uh, what do you think about? Well, there's potential for overhead supply here because this was less than nine to twelve months. Yeah. Ago. Yeah. Now this 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 was a very very tough. A, 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 a tough and long uh, and uh, incredible decline. And there was not a whole lot that was set up at new highs or just breaking out. You, this is where if, if a bear market goes on for a long period of time, if you start seeing follow through days and stocks resisting and you're getting a few new leaders, this is where you have to you try to buy individual stocks that are turning or, or and I don't know exactly what the earnings were on. I mean, they were, they were probably still losing money. Um, but this is where you, you have to combine buying some indexes to get your exposure to the market mm -hmm. and then start picking off the individual stocks as they start breaking their downtrends or turning up above that 200-day moving average or that 50-day is in, a, in an uptrend. You start seeing, I mean, these are bottoming bases, but... Um, so yes, maybe you don't you don't buy as big, but you can at least get a foothold in some of these uh, stocks that are are early turns off the bottom. But that's what happened. That's what happens if a bear market goes on for over you know over a year, over a year and a half, like this this one did. Um, it's going to be tougher to find individual names, um, but there are some that you'll see that are poking out you know, before others, and you can start taking some positions in those. I believe Justin, uh, in an earlier show, highlighted how Bill O'Neill was purchasing shares in at least Apple, if not uh, many of the others uh, after, and then in a level four IBD canceling master's seminar in Santa Monica pointed out how one of the, the, the clues to getting that conviction to be buying so well off the highs here was the fact, just like what Dave was talking about, this refusal to make new lows, this dry up, relatively speaking, and volume on the downside for our versus here. Uh, David, uh, maybe your quick thoughts on Netflix, uh, because uh, right. one of our wonderful audience uh, members also highlighted this one as, hey, this is another example yeah, of a no. stock really defying it. Yeah, no, I, I was, I was, you know, I, I was trying to find as many examples, but um but that is another good example. You see, the good thing here is that 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 200 day was flattening out. It really didn't come off that much. But look at the price and volume 
since on the lows of that. And look where that stock was when the S&P was making a low in that March of that year. Look what that, there's a stock that's breaking out to new highs. Now it looks like it traced, retraced that, came back down. I don't know why, the, what the news was to bring that back down, but there was one that, um, that at least was setting up nicely. And you got, you actually got a move. If you were buying that on the day the market bottom while this stock was breaking out, I, you still got a move from, I don't know, 38, 39 up to, up to close to, I guess it got over 50 and then, then it reversed. Um, so, but that's, you know, that's others. And if there are others out there that people can remember, uh, it's just, these are just more examples to look to see how a market bottoms and what the leadership does. The one thing I'd like to point out, this is so minor, but it's very small. If you, if you could highlight, look at all the insider selling on that stock. Um, all those, you know, the zeros with the minuses, that's, that, <laughs> That's insider selling. Now you you, you got to believe because the move that this stock made in subsequent years, that these guys wish they had had hold had held on to their the <laughs> stock that they had. Now may that's why preset, I put, preset sales. Uh, yeah, I, it was preset sales, or maybe yeah. they just had their whole net worth in the company or something. Mm -hmm. That's why I put very very little. Um, uh, uh, weight in insider selling. I actually put a lot more weight in insider buying because th when they buy, they're usually seeing some kind of turn. So, um, but that's that's a super minor minor point. Everything else on that chart is much more important. One more that uh, might be worth to look at, and Bill, not our Bill O'Neill, but uh, unless Bill O'Neill is listening, uh, I, I I would love that if he if he is. Uh, but Bill in the Q and A is also highlighting Monster, yeah, MNST as okay, another wow. example. David, okay. yeah, that yeah. that had a look how tight that got there yep. um, in that March April, but then it broke out and then it pulled back down. Um, you know, maybe it was the general market having a, a, a. We'd have to go and look at the general market chart again to see what caused even Netflix and Monster. But mm -hmm. there's another one that's showing up, and and uh, that that had a good move off of that. That here's the also. March sixth uh, low or March 9th low uh, yeah. for the S and P 500, and and kind of similar to Netflix. So that 50 day moving average already crossed above the 200 day, and in a nice yeah. sharp uptrend, David. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it feels like this was truly a. Would you agree this was a bottoming base? I mean, overall going back yeah. to as far as yeah, early two thousand eight. Yeah, this this a uh, bottom in October. Uh, and here's the weekly chart showing uh, the prior run up uh, of this magnificent model book type of kind of winner. Okay, I yeah, think we're, and yeah. and that's an example of something too that has had a huge run that. It's when a stock has a gigantic run, it, it seems like it has to digest it for a number of years, uh, if not longer. And that's exactly sort of what that one did before it, it had another move up. Oh, without que without question. And uh, we're getting so much, so much feedback and, and additional questions uh, regarding this segment. Uh, David, just wanted to, wanted to let you know. And I think uh, we'll cap the educational segment right there. Obviously, we're going to have the video archived so people can rewatch it. And another, a great question uh, from someone who highlighted, well, you know, did we see value stocks who that eventually became big winners in the aftermath of the GFC crisis? How do they act? And you know what? This is this is the beauty of Marcus Smith, where you can check out any stock trading at that time. Right. Uh, assuming that they're still around. I, I don't know if, if companies that gone bankrupt are still kept in a database, likely not, but you can see how blue chips and uh, slower moving names acted around that same time. Yeah, I mean, and, well, and, yeah. Yeah. Why don't you bring up okay. General Motors? Uh, <laughs> let's do it. <laughs> let's and see what that did off the bottom. Well, uh, did they? Uh, well, I mean, I'm try, sure that, try. Well, they, that was post bankruptcy. Maybe yeah. forward. Try forward or try forward. Right. Some of them have that's like right. okay. they're not go. dying. You have to keep in mind is that we're not dying rally, and that's those can be powerful. Okay, uh, so I, I go oh, back wait, to this, May. Yeah, you got to go back to. Yeah, that's better. Okay, so yeah, okay, so 
when the the market bottomed in April of that year, that was a three dollar stock. I mean, it had it had a, a real nice move. Um, but then how you know how far was that sustained? Um, uh, you no, know, I, I mean, go, but that's not go further in time. That's yeah. I mean, the stock the stock made a nice move. I mean, it had look. Yeah, it had a nice move, built a nice base at six, went to eight, built a nice move at eight. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I mean, it, I, I still, the growth stocks are going to make your biggest moves, but you can still get, you can still get some, some good moves off of uh, some turnaround situation. I mean, that's more cyclical and, and, and more of a turnaround. Um, yeah, you, yeah that, just, uh, here's not another as, one that didn't go bankrupt during that time, yeah. but. Not as strong. It, not as strong, for sure, right? Yeah. Uh, here's the bottom, and we almost hit bottom there. But it looks like uh, there was eventually some base that formed long afterward. Uh, how about IBM? That was clearly around at the time, and this yeah, one that, bottomed earlier. Yeah, it bottomed earlier. Uh, it was the right group. This this had its heyday back in the 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, and it really hasn't been a good stock in the yeah. last 20 years. And, so, I, yeah, I think I think we all can, yes, uh, pick pick our stocks uh, from from that period and see, and then compare them to the the five, six, seven examples that David just presented us. How, how yeah, about that? And, and the last thing is that bottoms are not they're not easy because you get retests. You get you because you're you're still in the mentality of it takes a while to for people to come around and get the confidence to buy and then stay with the stocks because you've just been living through you know 18 months of you know st stock market I don't want to say hell but uh, but it's just it's just not easy and you're still locked into that mentality oh gosh if if I get a few points I'm going to take it and they start pulling back and it's it, it it can be very very tough and that's why you start slow and if the stock makes a nice move and builds a base then you can go in and add to it um, but it's uh, it's 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 not easy it's always so much easier looking back and said oh yeah I would have bought on that bottom day but um, but at least these give you some examples of what to look for as the market is, is starting to starting to turn. Hey, everyone. Thanks so much for watching Investors Business Daily on YouTube. If you want to watch more videos, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss a thing.